Andy has blue eyes. The tribe is obsessed with eyes that aren't brown. Nader used to be engaged to a girl from the tribe, but he broke it off because he found the guy's number in the phone. It didn't make sense to him. He was cheating on her all the time. He says, you can't be with a girl from the tribe unless you fuck Lowy's on the side. Why? I asked. Because you can't reach your fiance until you're married. You end up with blue balls. I didn't know what blue balls were, but I remember thinking, we'll never check my foot. Nader runs into the bedroom and throws himself over Taker's body and wails into her. The front door swings open and four big steps pound against the floor. Mum! Uncle Ali is on his knees in the middle of the hallway. He's the biggest man in our family. They used to call him Thunder Thighs when he played for the Junior Rabbitohs. So powerful that nothing could bring this man to the ground. Uncle Ali's wife, Zubeda, walks in. She's holding her newborn, Fatima. Her eyes zoom in on the people in the bedroom. She looks at the bed. The baby falls to the tiles and screams like she just came out of the womb for about 10 seconds. Nobody does anything. We just watch the baby's reaction. Oh my God! She screeches and bursts into tears. The baby wails until finally Uncle Ibrahim picks her up and takes her out. Then my mum tumbles in. Come, come, Jibu in the hood. The ambulance is here. The place is starting to feel like a zoo. I watch family member after family member turn into an animal with no self-control and no thought-out response. It makes my stomach churn. It's the strangest taste in my mouth. Like I've been licking a concrete wall all day. The Bellevue, this murmuring, the clinking of cutlery, and the high pitched voices of the tribe shooting out over the hall. A man stands on stage at the head of the dance floor. He's dressed in a tight white suit and a black shirt. His gut pulls on the buttons. Beside him are the bride's parents, Fatima and Hassan, and my grandmother with her skin glowing golden, and the bridal party. The groomsmen are in black suits and the bridesmaids are in red boot tube dresses. They're supposed to look like couples, but everyone in the tribe is so related to me that it makes my loins shrivel. Ladies and gentlemen, the MC says, the music dies down. I can hear breathing, fidgeting, air conditioners around. And now, it pauses for effect. Please stand. 500 people are on their feet looking towards the door. I can feel 5,000 toes clenching, holding back a thousand feet. A thousand hands and hips resisting the urge to start swinging. I can feel the fat paws of the drummers resting on their drums, waiting. I can feel all this, but it's not enough. I have to see it too. I jump up on our table and glare out over the crowd. Everyone looks like they're about to explode. They're on the tips of their feet, leaning in. They might fall if they lean in any closer. Put your hands together for the new bride and groom. Once the band starts up, fireworks are up down the walkway like golden sprinklers. The doors fly open, voices hail, the hands, hips and feet of the guests release and Ali and Zubeda step forward like giants. Behind them are three men in white cafes, each banging on a tubble as they pounce up and down. Ali and Zubeda bounce along the walkway to the boom, boom, boom of the drums. Around them the women ululating. <laughs> 
the hands of the band members move across their instruments like liquid and the MC starts singing. Gina, 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 Gina. We've come, we've come, we've come. We've brought the bride and come. I was only nine when this happened. But it always feels like right now, I watch and I suck on three pieces of paper.